Hey, I'm Nick Bayer. Welcome to Pocket for Wednesday, the 22nd of June. Today on the show, a mighty bad launch, Newman, and the things I buy don't exist. Plus, Pete's back, baby. First up, and Chinese mega company Tencent continues to buy all the things you love by purchasing Clash of Clans developer Supercell for $8.6 billion, or what Joe spent on Clash Royale last week. Supercell is on track to make over $2 billion outside of Asia this year, compared to the $1.3 billion Tencent made outside of Asia last year, most of which came from League of Legends. Having already been the largest game company in terms of revenue, in part by owning a stake in both Activision and Riot Games, Tencent is positioned to generate $13 billion this year, thereby owning 13% of the world's entire video game market. And continuing the series' current trend of cancellations, Fable Fortune's Kickstarter has been cancelled. The game is still being made though, as developer Flaming Foul Studios secured funding from an undisclosed source to support development. Peter Molyneux's cube money, no doubt. In a campaign update, Flaming Foul noted that with the immediate future of Fable Fortune now secure, we have taken the decision to end our Kickstarter campaign early to focus on releasing a closed beta build as quickly as possible. It's a positive step for the developer as the crowdfunding campaign was almost certainly going to fall short of its goal. The Ghostbusters video game will come bundled with the new feature film. Activision and Sony Pictures announced an ultimate bundle edition of the upcoming game, which includes a digital copy of the film. The game is launching on PS4, Xbox One, and PC on the 12th of July, but the film's digital download code will be distributed at a future date. The movie hits cinemas on the 14th of July here in Oz, so hopefully it won't be too long after that. Mighty Number no. 9 has finally launched, but not without a few more characteristic screw-ups. One final delay was on the cards as the Xbox 360 version of the game has been held off for several days after a bug was discovered in final testing. Developer Comcept has said it's already resubmitted the game to Deep Silver and Microsoft and they expect it to go gold within a few days. And here's the kicker, if all goes according to plan. As if anything in this game's development has gone to plan. And if it has, it was a terrible plan. Comcept are also in damage control after the game's backers started reporting that they're not receiving all of the DLC that was promised. Backers were to receive two separate pieces of DLC, Retro Hero and Ray. Game codes sent out from Humble Bundle included two DLC keys, but both codes are for the Retro Hero content. PlayStation buyers have had code-related issues too, with some reporting that the codes they received register as invalid, and some people haven't received codes at all. This has all become a very public mess for Comcept. You can't help but stand back and just watch the train wreck of a disaster that is this game unfold. I mean, even bloody Sonic the Hedgehog is having a dig. The official Sonic the Hedgehog account tweeted, Congrats on the launch at Money Number no. 9. It's better than nothing. Shrugs. And you know things are going bad when the consistently worst series of the last decade is mocking you. Hedgehogs and glass houses. Moving on now to get that sour taste out of your mouth, here's some free stuff. Battlefield 4's second Assault DLC is now free on Origin, PSN, and Xbox Live Marketplace, and Child Murdering Simulator Limbo is free on Steam for the next 30 hours or so. If you're watching this a couple of days in the future, then you've missed out on the free Limbo, so that's too bad. But you should really watch Pocket on time to avoid being put in this terrible position. Alright, now it's time for Thing of the Day! of the day. All right, time for thing of the day. Seinfeld is a seminal piece of American television, but it's not to everyone's taste. If you've ever felt the urge to put George's self-loathing neuroses to rest, you can do so now in a Doom 2 mod by Doug Keener. He's a re-gifter. These pretzels are making me thirsty. I proclaim this the summer of George! <laughs> Surrender me now! I'm joined now by Behind the Television's Joe to discuss our talk through. Hi. Hi, how are you? Yeah, right. Uh, today's talk through, just alright? 
Yeah, pretty good. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. make it short. Mm. Today's talk through comes in from Dr. Internet, who says, are you scared that with the rise of digital trading card games that you run the risk of losing everything you have collected if the developers decide to shut down the game servers in the future, as opposed to still having physical cards a la Magic the Gathering? Mm. Jojo? Yeah. I brought you on because you, like me, have mm -hmm. invested money yes. in some free-to-play games. Correct. I'm going to extend this a little more to all free-to-play style games, mm -hmm. but yeah. a lot of them are cards. What, what's your drug of choice? At the moment, it's probably Clash Royale. Yep. But I wouldn't say I'm scared mm -hmm. of losing it. I accept that's probably a reality. Yep. Everything moves on. You know, life continues. I can't imagine in 20 years I'll still be playing this version of Clash Royale. Like, that's just not going to happen. I think you have a very healthy, holistic view yeah. of your gaming life. But part of me hopes, you know, if Clash Royale 2 comes out, things can carry over. Mm -hmm. I would like to see that kind of thing. But if it doesn't, eh, c'est la vie, you know. Are you are you comfortable giving me a ballpark figure of how much you put into Clash Royale? I honestly couldn't say because it's it does that you know really mind trickery thing where hmm. it's like I'll just spend fifteen dollars today because I want that little thing now, and I've done that a bunch of times. So I don't know, a few hundred probably yeah. <laughs> all up. So if they shut down the service tomorrow, mm. would you be would you feel that you were entitled to a refund, or is this a situation where you go? Do you want warning? Do you, like how how do you want that to be? I think if they approach? shut it down tomorrow, I'd be very surprised because <laughs> because they're, they're making a fortune. They're making a fortune. They're supercell. There's a certain you, you go into a lot of these games with you know an assurance. Something like Blizzard. Something like Supercell. They're big entities. They're not just going to disappear overnight. Yeah. Maybe there are some fly by night kind of mobile free to play games that would just disappear. But yeah, I'm not I'm not worried about. If, if it did, I would be concerned and I would be like. I wish I could get my money back, but I would accept that I couldn't. I think that's yeah. a really good point that you're that for me because I've put you know I've put money into Hearthstone. This is a game that I realised that if they ever shut down the servers, then I can't play this game mm. anymore. And a lot of that game also it, it doesn't translate very well to physical, so I can't even print them out and kind of do it myself. That's a terrible way of playing that game. Mm. Um, but I am investing in Blizzard. I'm yeah. not necessarily investing in the game. I'm investing in the fact that Blizzard tend to support their games. The fact that StarCraft 2 is still a competitive game. Yeah. Uh, and, and like you said with Supercell, there's a game that I just started playing a couple of days ago called um, Faria, Faria, and it's kind of like Magic the Gathering meets mm. Catan. Yeah. And it was asking me, oh, do you want to buy packs to unlock more cards in this game? And I went, no, oh, no, because I looked on Reddit and I saw people posting, oh, I'm having trouble finding a game because of the player base. Right. And I realized, oh yeah, investing in that company may not be the best idea because I don't know how long they're going to be around. Yeah, it's just not a sure thing. The security is a good point. What, what do you feel about the idea that you're, you're buying something that doesn't exist, that mm. you don't get to own it? Uh, mm. For me, I feel like I'm buying I'm buying the fun now, yeah. as opposed to I'm actually buying the cards. Yeah, I don't have any. I don't feel like I'm buying a physical thing. Mm. You know, the world we live in today is all about buying digital goods, and most of the time you don't own the rights to them properly anyway. It's like a license to play for a while. Like our Steam libraries yeah. and buying games on PSN yeah. or Xbox Live. Yeah. If if those companies decide to shut down servers or revoke licenses, all that stuff's gone. So. Yeah, and it's it's horrible in a way when you you think about it, but mm. at the same time, you live for the day. You know, you, exactly. You you buy it, you enjoy it for now, and then if in ten years time it's gone and you can't access it, that sucks. Yeah. But you know, you you should have had your fun during the time, and if you really want to play it again in ten years, then maybe something else can scratch that itch. You could be dead tomorrow, you so be, you should yeah. buy all that stuff today. And I think that's a good point. That I I can't think of many games that I've played that have had their servers shut down, but maybe that's because this is more of a more recent occurrence. But mm. um, World of Warcraft is mm. a game where I go. When I was playing World of Warcraft, I was like, I'll play this forever. I've put so much time and money into this, and now I don't play it. But that's been replaced by Dota. The, sure. the things that I love will probably be replaced by other things that I love, and yep. I'll just look back on it like a past relationship, where I go, oh, that was a fun time of my life. I'm really glad I'm not doing that anymore. Hmm. And there'll be that little itch that one day you, you might want to revisit it, and you can't, and you'll just be a bit sad. I don't so know, I've got a bunch of live streams of me playing Hearthstone, yeah. so I could just go watch those. You could. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Well, let us know what you think about uh, this idea of what you're investing in, and uh, these collections that could one day disappear. Are you the kind of person that sinks money into these free-to-play games for the fun now? Or do you just grind it out and get those free packs like Sam does? Let us know in the comments. And while you're there, please suggest a talk-through topic for tomorrow, and stay on the internet. And check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. You can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV. Follow Pocket at Nick Boy, at Pierre, at GGM Monkey, at Sam Gee. No more at Toby GV. 
Don't even bother with this guy. There are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's thing today was sent in by Lorne Whitecross. Thank you very much, Lorne. Though I do think the main character looks more like you than it does me. Yeah, uh, but, but good work on John as well. Until tomorrow, Nick Boyer! Go go. Got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing.